Good evening. This is a meeting of the Scarborough Board of Education, and it is January 7th, 2016. May I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mrs. Lyford? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Dr. Miles? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Looks like this is a gray night. Christine, Moving on to 4.0. Do so I have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 4056C for the purpose of finalizing the details of the executive search, superintendent search contract to, ret to return to public session? So move. Second. Second. Very good. Any discussion? All in favor? Six. Thank you. Seven. We are into executive session. We will return to the public session. Are we going upstairs?
Good evening. This is the Scarborough Board of Education returning after executive session. So we'll just move right on to 5.0. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? There are none. 6.0, we have a presentation from uh, NESDEC, which is the New England School Development Council. And present with us this evening, we have Dr. Art Bettencourt, who is the Executive Director, and Dr. Ken De Benedictus, who is the Senior Search Associate, who will be working directly with the Board of Education uh, on the search. So, gentlemen, if you want to come to the podium, I think everything's set up for you, and do your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to be here with you, and uh, I'm delighted that we're going to be able to help you with your search. Clearly, uh, the, the selection of a, a superintendent of schools is one of the most, if not the most, uh, pr uh, important processes that a, that a board will, will go through. Um, and important not just to the board, uh, but also to the entire community. So we're delighted to be able to assist you with that search. As mentioned before, my name is Art Bettencourt. I'm the executive director of, of NASDEQ, and uh, Dr. Ken De Benedictus is the search consultant that will be working directly with you. Um, the New England, uh, if I can figure out where the enter thing is, there we go. The New England School of Development Council, otherwise known as NASDEQ, was originally established at the Harvard Graduate School of Education in 1946. That makes us 69 years old. Um, that's a lot of experience and a lot of searches. We're not for profit organization. Um, and therefore, we can devote all of our resources to the services that we give to districts throughout New England. Our mission is very simple, and that is to develop schools and school districts as high performing organizations. Uh, we accomplish our mission in basically four core areas. Uh, we're involved in planning and management and legal services. Uh, we do enrollment projections, facilities planning, strategic planning for districts all over New England. We also have a presence in professional development where we work with school boards and district leadership teams uh, to develop new skills uh, and to improve skills. Uh, we also um, are involved in research and development. We have a national presence in what we call team governance that is helping boards of education and school leaders work together to develop goals and then to, to work toward achievement of those goals. And the reason I'm, we're here this evening is to speak with you about our leadership development and executive search area. Thus far, um, NESDEC has conducted well over 500 successful executive searches throughout the New England states. Um, and I would suggest to you that the number is probably closer to 600 at that point because I've been saying 500 for years. Uh, and in all, in all that time we've been doing, we've been doing more searches. Um, our catchment area is New England. We are a New England based firm. Uh, we are, our headquarters is in Marlboro, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Our work area is the entire New England area, which includes all of the New England states. What makes us unique is that we also have a national presence and we're recognized nationally and what we do in the case of executive search is we use that national recognition to attract talent to New England uh, on a national basis. Uh, and in fact one example of that is that Ken who uh, will be working as your search consultant is scheduled to go to the national conference, AASA conference in Phoenix this year to recruit. Um, so we do that uh, frequently sending uh, representatives to other parts of the country so that we can make known what we have available for, uh, for uh, superintendent uh, opportunities in the area of New England. Uh, getting right down to the, the search itself, the elements of the search are really five in number and they, they go uh, or they fall into the, the following categories. The design phase, uh, the development of the candidate profile, recruiting and outreach, the screening and selection process, and then the final follow-up and support. I'll talk to you briefly about each one of these. In the design phase, we talk to you about how you would like your search to, to unfold. A typical search takes about 120 days, and I won't go through them, but on the left-hand side of the document that you're looking, there, looking at there are the various milestones that you would be involved in scheduling into your search as you design how you ser your search would like to, to uh, roll out. 
Uh, for example, the Board of Education Orientation starts this evening, uh, and uh, Ken will, will be talking more with you about that. Developing your, your ads, um, and then publicizing your vacancies, and all of those things fall out in a particular pattern. And the idea is that we want to talk with you about the sequence of those things, the dates that make sense to you, um, and all of those will typically fall into about 120 days, four or five months worth of, of, of work um, in order to bring an applicant pool to you that you can consider. We, uh, one of the very important pieces of, of our work with you will t be to develop your candidate profile. That candidate profile is the profile that we use to determine who we will recruit, who we will try to interest in your, your superintendency. Uh, and that candidate profile is really the result of a community needs assessment where we'll talk to various uh, constituencies in your community and also a facilitated conversation with you, the board, to determine what it is you're looking for in your next superintendent of schools. What kinds of experiences do you, would you like to have that person have? What kinds of competencies? All of those things are things that we want to talk to you about. After that facilitated conversation with you, Ken will put together, synthesize all of that for you, and that will be your candidate profile. That candidate profile uh, is usually something that appears on your website that we make known to candidates so that candidates, in fact, can to some degree self-select. If they see a candidate profile that they think they fit and they're interested in, then we're hopeful that they will come to you as an applicant. In addition, we will use, as I said, that candidate profile to, to recruit. The candidate profile is also a very important instrument when it comes to actually interviewing and evaluating candidates because what you will, part of what you will do is to, is to evaluate your candidate, uh, the candidates in front of you based upon what your profile has to, has to say. Um, outreach is very important, and we'll talk to you about the various elements of outreach. There is, a, there is a hard copy outreach that we will take care of for you. There is an electronic network outreach that we will talk to you about. There are presence on websites. The NESDEC website uh, certainly um, will, will be very effective in, in terms of um, developing interest in your position. We also have a national website that we will we'll be using in other uh, websites as well. And we'll talk to you about how those things roll out and, and how, um, how you will describe yourself um, as a district and those things that you want folks to know uh, as, they consider, uh, as they consider you. The other thing that we're going to, to do for you is what's called active tiered recruiting. Um, and this actually is a proprietary uh, process. Um, we're not aware of any other organization that can do it quite this way. We have, uh, as part of NESDEC, about 10 consultants uh, in the field. All of those 10 consultants will share resources in terms of who's available uh, in the New England area uh, and, and who might be interested in your position. Um, in addition to that, Ken has his own, uh, his own network that he, that he uses, um, and that is very effective. We go beyond that to the NESDEC network, which is a database an electronic database that we keep updated constantly of folks in the field that we know are out there and where they are in their particular career paths and those that might be interested in a position like this. And then finally, at the national level, we go to the National School Development Council Proprietary Recruiting Network, uh, which gets the word out nationally. So it's a very effective recruiting uh, process. In addition to putting the word out just in, in websites um, and, and those, sorts, those sorts of things, we can actually get the, the, the word out in an active way uh, through telephone calls and emails um, and letters. Uh, the screening and selection process is something that you will get to uh, as, as a board. Uh, one of the things that's very important is that when you finally get to that candidate that you're looking for, you want to be sure you can land him or her. So one of the things we're, we're very careful about is to develop uh, an agreement in principle with those folks that you're looking at seriously. The idea of the agreement in principle is to find out in advance what are the requirements that, that you will have to meet in order to, to keep them in your system or, or bring them to your system. And it's not just salary. I mean, it could be other things in terms of graduate programs or, or other, other items that they may be interested in. So we try to find out all of those things in advance so that you can determine 
when you're looking at these candidates, that these are candidates that, sh that you can actually bring into, into your organization. We also do credential verification, reference checks, and we would also suggest to you that um, as part of the process, if you wish, we will give you the names of certain references that you yourselves as board members might contact to have a first-hand uh, first conversation about the, about the, uh, the candidates. Um, that's becoming more and more popular, and I, I think uh, it's a very effective way of putting you in touch directly with the people uh, who know these candidates and can tell you something about them. And then as you go through the process, we can assist you with uh, other elements uh, of that process and then also assist you, if you wish, in the conversation about the final decision. And then also, uh, if you wish, we'll assist with the initial contract arrangements. This is not legal assistance, but rather we can give you an idea of what the, the typical elements of a contract might be that you'd want to consider, where the pitfalls might be. And also part of our service is after you've chosen your successful candidate and that candidate is sitting in the chair in the superintendent's office, at some point uh, we can send uh, one of our consultants in for a, a transition, entry and transition consultation, which is helping that new person think about the things that he needs to keep in mind as he's moving into this new position. And also, as part of this package, uh, you will receive NESDEC affiliation uh, for one year at no cost. That's about a, for your district, your size, it's about a $4,000 item. You get that at no cost. What that entitles you to is our enrollment projections and also what we call our special education trend report. Now, I, I, in an earlier conversation, you were talking about your, your faculty and your numbers. The enrollment projections might be very useful to you, and our special education trend report gives you an opportunity to, to look at the trending you have in terms of your, your special ed services. In addition, uh, this search is warranted for two years. In other words, if the superintendent that you choose leaves the position for any reason other than a retirement or a promotion in the system, which means in the municipality or, or someplace else, um, we will come back within that two-year period and do another search for you, a follow-up search, for no consulting fee. The only thing that we would ask for are the expenses which are itemized in, in the contract. So both of those things are additional, additional items or additional benefits to you as a result of uh, working with, with NESDEC. And I think that's it. I want to thank you, and it's our pleasure to work with you. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and, and Ken is here to help you with uh, the details of your search. Anyone? Any questions? So, um, Art, could you or Ken just talk a little bit uh, about the forums, um, about the concept, and um, you know, just ex give a little bit of a better picture on the um, time frame? When I, Do you want to? When I talk to you about the materials that I have, and okay. on the, in the outline, uh, in the calendar. Is an opportunity to identify dates for the for the forum up, forum sessions. There are four of them. Uh, can you, sorry, excuse me. Can you go up to the mic? Because I'm not sure the people at yeah. home can uh, hear you. Only so people can hear you. Yeah. Point, Thank you. <coughs> let me uh, let me give each of you a packet of information that. Uh, we'll go over very quickly, and uh, it will take you through the process that Art that Art just uh, explained to you. But if you could take a packet, please. I think that very nicely went over everything with you. Um, I'll talk about the contents, uh, other contents of materials in this packet, but I want to get out to you some documents which I'd like you to begin looking at because we have some work to do. Uh, one is a copy of, I just want to copy it myself. If you can get that out. This is a copy of the proposed schedule that I suggest that we take a look at. It is a draft. Obviously, there's opportunity to make adjustments as we process through. 
But what I'd like to do is to uh, explain to you what art has, in a general way, discussed. The search will take about 120 days. Actually, it'll take a little less if you follow the schedule that I'm suggesting. It begins with our meeting tonight, January 7th, where we do an orientation. <clears throat> and it continues with some other components. One of the components is a conversation about putting together an ad and also organizing a draft. So I do have copies of both, which I'd like you to take a look at for a moment. That's the ad. And a copy of the announcement. This is a real challenge. Too there you go. <laughs> I know you can do it. I have confidence in you. There you go. Thank you. Oh, I think I got two. I'll I'll be happy to share with you the slide yeah. for you. Now, looking at the schedule, you'll notice that there's a date of January 21st. Uh, that's a date that simply is a placeholder, and I'd like to discuss that date with you tonight at some point, but that's the date around which I, th I think I'd like you to take a look at the ad and as, as, a, as a committee of, as a whole or a subgroup, uh, identify what it is that you'd like to add to the ad or delete from it, but the 21st would be the date around which I would like to have the ad completed so that we can use it electronically. <coughs> That will be the vehicle that we will send to all of our electronic advertisements, which will include um, the NESDEC website, the National School Development Co uh, Council website, uh, Ed Week, Top Jobs, uh, and AASA, as well as School Spring. So there'll be five websites that we will send this advertisement to. It will be sent as it is prepared, or as you decide it should be prepared. Uh, there probably will be some minor editing that you'd like to have. The advertisement should be about its length there. That's one, two, three. It's roughly five or six paragraphs. Starts with a little bit about where you are. Talks about your school district. Indicates what uh, kinds of support the superintendent can expect to have at the central office. A little bit about uh, the multi-year contract and compensation package. And then something about how the person should uh, inquire about additional information. Usually what happens is someone sees this ad electronically and they will call the NESDEC office or email the NESDEC office and then I follow up with every inquiry, answer questions, talk to the candidate, encourage the application. So this is the first uh, instance of communication with the potential candidate pool. <coughs> the next thing I'd like you to look at is something uh, entitled uh, with the address, Dear Fellow Educator. This is the page and a half <coughs> announcement document that we talked about in our contract. And again, it goes into a lot more detail than the advertisement does. Talks about your location, talks a little bit about your history, talks about your community and how it, it represents itself today. Uh, there's something there about the school district in terms of how you were organized and what facilities you have. You'll notice that there's a statement here that reads, here you can bullet state accomplishments by specific level or general statements about the school district. This is where I encourage you to write whatever you'd like that you think talks about pridefully what Scarborough represents. So what m some school districts do is they talk generally about the schools other places identify. At the elementary level, we're proud of. At the middle school level, we're happy to share that we've accomplished. At the secondary level, these are our accomplishments. Uh, you could also indicate in this, as you go into the second page, uh, there's information about those folks, those individuals who work at the central office supporting the, the, the position of the superintendent. Uh, the next paragraph talks about what the school board uh, is looking for in terms of the experience base that the candidate brings. 
So if there are things that you would like in the person's background that you would like that person to highlight, this is where you might indicate that. If, for example, you want someone who's experienced in leadership with the Mazzano approaches to professional development and teacher evaluation, then you could indicate that there. If you believe that there's something in uh, with that person's experience, someone comes to you with uh, heavy uh, involvement in technology, for example, someone who has had uh, outstanding experience in re reaching out to the community and is able to connect with the community to facilitate support for budget successes, uh, you might indicate that there. So it's a place for you to add uh, what you believe is appropriate uh, for the candidate to review. So it's basically a two-page document. Again, I'm asking that you take a look at this. You edit, is, edit it so that it is representative of what you believe the school district is seeking. And that this can be done by the 21st. Then we'll be able to do a couple of things. Uh, if you go back to the schedule, we'll be able to, on the 21st, be able to distribute the uh, advertisements electronically. We'll be able to uh, duplicate and mail to about 800 individuals and organizations the announcement, and we'll begin to actively recruit our potential candidate pool. Now, I'm suggesting that, uh, again, in the contract, there's a facilitated conversation with the board the purpose of that facilitated conversation is to give you the opportunity to identify those qualities that you'd like to see in the next superintendent of schools and to identify, in addition, those concerns, questions, or issues that you'd like the next superintendent of schools to begin thinking about after he or she begins uh, his or her position. I'm suggesting that we have that meeting on January 21st. That's a couple of weeks out. I don't know what your schedule looks like. Um, if it's a night that we could meet, that would be great. We could do a facilitated conversation. You could have the ad and the announcement completed, and then we could go from there. But you and I can talk about that after tonight uh, to firm, firm that date up. Um, you talked about the focus groups. If you look at your package, I'll re reference you back to the package, you'll notice at the back, paper clip, is information about the focus group who those individuals or those groups might be, and they could be a whole variety of people. It could be a professional staff, it could be residents of the community, it could be business officials, it could be elected leaders. Um, my suggestion would be that if we meet on the 21st, we can talk further about focus groups, we can talk about who they might be. Uh, I'm suggesting that we uh, do the focus groups if you go back to the schedule, I'm suggesting that we do the focus groups uh, the week of February 29th. And what we'll try to do is, is identify a couple of days when we could do the four focus groups. Usually what's done is a group is done in the afternoon, such as teachers, for example. And then there's an evening opportunity for community residents. And then uh, in the afternoon of the next day, uh, I could meet with the school administrators, for example, and in that evening I could meet with whomever you wish. Elected and appointed officials in the community, for example, might be a fourth. But we'll talk about who those four groups might be. Now, if you decide that you want more than four groups, I mean, that's possible. There's an additional fee for it. It's not a lot, and I'm not looking for business because I think four is fine. But in some places, people indicate we need to reach out and, and involve more, fee more people. We'll talk about that when we get together and identify what it is that you'd like for the representative group. If that time frame that I've indicated works for you, which days might we do it? Which times might we do it? Now, I work very carefully with focus groups. They're very critically important. Why? Because it helps us to identify a profile of what the candidate should, should look like in terms of experience, in terms of background, in terms of personal qualities. Uh, we then identify candidates who best match and, and, and connect with that profile. That's really what helps us in terms of your screening work 
that you will do as we process through. It's also a great vehicle to help with the transition of your new superintendent in the school year because you've taken a look at what the community has suggested as qualities in a candidate and you've also looked at what are some of the issues that the school uh, residents believe uh, need to be addressed. Uh, if you agree with that perception, it's possible that those perceptions could become part of the foundation piece for the goals that you work uh, with your superintendent once he or she begins uh, the position. So there's lots of wonderful things that can be done as a result of that focus group effort. So again, I'm looking at doing that the week of the 29th, a couple of days, some <coughs> groups. We'll take a look at that and, and complete that discussion. Uh, notice on March 11th is the distribution of a focus group report. I will prepare for you a report. It's a very lengthy report. It identifies everything that everyone said, not by name, but by group, and then it also looks at what we as groups have uh, done to coalesce and organize our thinking and our perceptions. Uh, so I will have that report ready for you uh, on March 11th. It will be available electronically, and you can post it on your website under the superintendent search. Uh, you could also have it available hard copy, and what we suggest you do is distribute it to your schools, and you put it in your town library, put it here in the town hall, so that people get a sense of what it is that uh, we're trying to accomplish. The other thing about focus groups, which I think is really great, is that it's, a, it's an active outreach opportunity. It connects the community. It gives the community a sense of ownership, and it gives the community a sense of value, because we indeed value their input and value what they share with us. I'm, I'm suggesting that we close out the uh, search uh, on March 14th. That's about six, seven weeks from when we first notify individuals of the position. That, that should be sufficient for us. Uh, materials are organized. Uh, and then there is a uh, interviewing selection workshop with you. Uh, I'm suggesting we do it on March 21st and 22nd. I'll have all the applications. Uh, I will not uh, remove any of those applications. You will receive all of them. And uh, we will go through and talk about the candidate pool. We will talk about the, the uh, attributes that they bring. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, the skills and experiences which they have and look at how the candidates match up and connect with the profile that we've created. Uh, from that, we will identify candidates to interview. Uh, usually it's three to five, uh, excuse me. Usually it's eight to ten candidates are interviewed from the applicants that are that are uh, filed with us. Uh, if 11 candidates look really strong, will we interview 11 candidates? We absolutely will. What I'm suggesting to you is that from the candidate pool, we have a process by which we identify candidates that look strong enough and look as if they have the skill set that we need and the experience to uh, be given serious attention, and we bring those candidates in for, for interview. Uh, from that number, uh, we then uh, reduce it to three to five uh, who uh, uh, are, are brought in for uh, interviews uh, before the full board and uh, uh, visit the community. Um, and from there, uh, a recommendation is made in April 4th uh, for consideration for your next superintendent. Um, there's uh, dates here for first agreement in principle that I talked about. First agreement in principle, again, is an understanding by the candidates of the parameters that you've identified in terms of salary and, and benefits package that you believe you'd like to offer to the candidate. It's important that we have that so that we don't experience a candidate that you're thinking very strongly about who, in terms of looking at a contract, uh, asks for more than what you're willing to provide. So we get a commitment from the candidate that they are willing to accept what that range is and what that contract package will include. So we do that twice. We do that when we uh, forward names uh, of finalist nature uh, to the board and uh, when we uh, are at a point where we're ready to offer a contract. We're suggesting that the candidates uh, can visit the school district 
and are interviewed uh, by the board, the full board, uh, the week of April 11th. And uh, following that, I'm suggesting that on April 18th, we meet to discuss what additionally you'd like to do. Uh, in some cases, it is visit the district of the candidate. Other times, it is making specific targeted telephone calls to specific people that you've identified that you'd like to talk to. Mm -hmm. We have suggestions on questions that you could ask. We have suggestions on people that you might want to talk to. Uh, in some cases, the board chooses to both visit and call, uh, but it will be entirely up to you. There are strengths and weaknesses to either, and we can talk about that as we get to it. Uh, we're looking at the selection of a superintendent by April 21st. So it's a very tight uh, schedule. It's a very workable schedule. Uh, it's a very inclusive schedule that maximizes input from a number of people, and I'm, I'm quite certain it will result in a, a very strong candidate pool uh, based upon your district, based upon your successes, based upon your geography, and based upon other attributes that you have. Questions? Mm -hmm. Ready? I just have a quick question um, with regards to the focus groups. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you had mentioned that there would be four focus groups and it could be made up of, of different cross sections of teachers or staff, um, citizens, but we'll also have that opportunity for um, electronic submission. I believe Correct. We, we spoke about where it could be, we could email a link to our, our database of parents or citizens, correct? People will be able to uh, access that, and I think we also talked about uh, they could do it electronically or they could do it in hard copy, and then forward that to the NESDEC uh, office, and we will incorporate the data we collect with, uh, with the data that we've gathered through our focus groups. And so maybe we, uh, as a board, we can figure out where we'd want to leave hard copies. Maybe the leader would be so nice as to highlight those <laughs> locations for us. Um, I, just, I think it's a great opportunity to get more input from the whole community if you're unable to make you know, right. those two days in February. Right. Yeah, that's another opportunity that we, we would offer. Uh, it, it doesn't have the impact that attendance at a focus group would because the opportunity at a focus group is to hear the perceptions of other people and to weigh in on those and to be able to come together and, and come to some kinds of conclusions. But it certainly is a vehicle that we would, we would offer. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Kelly? Just generally in terms of the schedule, um, I love that it's all laid out here. Um, my only issue with what I see here is the candidates visiting the district the April 11th through the 21st dates. That's um, April 11th is the week leading into April vacation. And I know we already are, specifically in this district, we have a budget workshop that week. So I know all the school leaders are going to be working on that more than full time to get that ready for that meeting. And then we'll be on vacation you know, it, many people won't be around for the dates that are scheduled there um, for it's selecting the superintendent. So. It's, it's a placeholder on, right. on this schedule, as you can appreciate. And obviously, it's flexible. We'll talk about it and come up with a, a time frame that's satisfactory for you and satisfactory for your time schedule. I just didn't, I, w I wasn't sure how critical or how much um, the candidates expect. You know, I've made the you know, this cut at this point and then to have the decision made. I didn't know if we could push it or if we should move it up either way, but. Sure, we, we can do any, any and all of those things. Uh, uh, I, I like to keep it flexible because you never know how competitive it's going to become as we get into it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to move things back a little bit, especially if you run the risk of losing candidates to other places. But obviously we need to communicate about that one of the things that we do, I think, pretty effectively is we maintain very careful communication about everything we do so that you're never left in the dark about anything. And if you ever have any questions such as that one, mm -hmm. that's something we would be happy to discuss and resolve. Okay. Anyone else? 
I have one more. Yes, Joan, sorry. Uh, the January 21st mm -hmm. uh, yes. discussion with the school board, you would be coming back? Yes. Here? Okay. If, if that could be arranged, it would be great because it's a perfect date. Yeah, we have a school board meeting that that day anyway. Good. Uh, yeah. I could come yeah. in I could come in an hour, hour and a half earlier. Oh, okay. If that yeah. would work for you? Well, um, we usually uh, do have another some training. Some yeah. training. Yeah. Three yeah. We have a six. training from three to six that day. That we have a training from three to six that day that's Interest going on. For some um of all of us? No. no, for some of them. But uh, certainly, um, <laughs> like, what? Yeah, okay. But I think <laughs> that night is still a good night, um, Ken. So we'll we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. Great. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll give you a call, and Donna, okay. and and we can work out the specifics on that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can keep in mind the the deadline date for if you could target that date for the ad of the announcement. Right. Get those complete. We will. We'll get those out the 25th. If we yep. can work out a meeting on the 21st. Yeah. That will really help to solidify a lot of the, of the work that we need to do. Great. No, that sounds good. I, it's all doable, I think. Excellent. That doesn't Excellent. Sound like a problem at all. I'm really excited about this opportunity. I think this mm. is going to be a very successful search. I've done a little bit of work looking at looking at your school district, looking at your, your successes. You've got so many good things going for you. Uh, I'm confident that we're going to have a very, very competitive pool, and I look forward to working carefully with you to make that happen. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, and I, I think the school board is, is also very pleased to be entering into this contract with the both of you. Um, yeah, I, we might have mentioned earlier that the board did a lot of work for a few weeks there, attempting to interview quite a few people in um, Maine and New Hampshire in their school districts because they had done the search last year. Good. So uh, we had lots of, of feedback and a lot of positive comments. Uh, about NESDEC and um, we're just really pleased to be able to and I, I could tell you when I got your contract uh, I decided to go through it again a few days ago in my living room and then I just sat back in the chair and I went oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that we made this decision because I think it's a really thorough um, search process that you offered it's your business and you know what you're doing so thank you we're pleased for that Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both for coming. Drive safely. There's pizza upstairs if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, too. Okay. Good night. Okay, so moving on, we have 7.0, the superintendent's report. Okay, um, I wanted to give you an update, and then I'm going to ask uh, Kate to address um, a few things uh, that, that's really from her side of, of the business. Um, I, I thought it would be important to give you an update about the work of our three collaborative teams that are really working at a community level to improve services for um, Scarborough students. Um, the first is the Health, Safety, Security, um, and Wellness Advisory Board. Um, you know that this advisory board um, has been organized into task teams, and we've reported out on some of that work before. Um, and uh, I, I really believe that that approach has been very successful and has accomplished uh, work that otherwise we would not have been able to get done. You also know that um, it includes um, uh, a member of the board, it includes key leaders from the town, including um, fire and, um, and public safety, and uh, other folks from community services and so on. So the task teams are as follows. Um, emergency preparedness and training team, the wellness and workplace safety team, and the Scarborough High School based, it's called the Community Health Awareness Team, and this was formerly the Substance Abuse Awareness Team. The great news is that all of these teams have continued to remain very actively engaged. Uh, they're doing important work, and uh, that's the important work that they've targeted. So just a brief update related to their current initiatives. The Emergency Preparedness and uh, Training Team has been finalizing emergency response protocols. Um, and is planning for training and simulations that will be starting in the spring. 
The wellness and workplace safety team is in the process of finalizing their draft of the district's wellness policy, which will be presented to the leadership council shortly to be vetted um, for passing on to the school board policy committee. As it relates to workplace safety, the team has been creating a network of individuals, one in each school, who can serve as the go-to person for any concerns or questions related to ergonomics, and we're getting a lot of those more and more, um, or any safety concerns within the workplace. In terms of the community health awareness team, I like it, I like the acronym, it, it spells out CHAT, C-H-A-T. It's a high school base, but does include both students and Emma, I think, are you on that team or not? The, the uh, one that was the previously the substance abuse awareness? No? I'm not. No. Okay. So there is, there is uh, student uh, participation and uh, parent representation on that team. And that team is busy developing a revised draft of the substance abuse policy with targeted completion of that draft um, in March. Um, and again, it would follow that same protocol of being vetted by the leadership council. Um, they also plan to develop an education and awareness program on opiate use and addiction. And as you all know, that's a huge topic. Um, moving on to the Scarborough Schools Education Business Partners, um, that team is planning for another, it's the second uh, college and career exploration day. Um, that's for seniors, sophomores, and freshmen. And unfortunately, the juniors that day are a little busy taking SATs. So they're the ones that are probably the unhappiest. They get to stay at school and um, take their SATs on April 12th. Um, this is a day that seniors attend some career seminars in the morning and participate in job show shadowing in the afternoon. Mr. Cazzo was pretty, um, pretty involved in, in setting up those job shadows. Uh, freshmen will be visiting Southern Maine Community College, exploring the various programs over at SMCC. Uh, the ones that they offer and the careers that relate to those, um, those programs for preparation uh, that a uh, SMCC diploma uh, uh, can, can lead to uh, exploring those kind of careers. Sophomores will be visiting either University of New England or the University of Southern Maine, again, to tour the campus, explore degree offerings at each of those universities, get a, a little bit of a walk on a college and hear from uh, professors and department heads and students and just generally get a taste of college uh, for the day. The plan is to build on last year's successful uh, uh, plan of, of um, college and career exploration for those three classes at the high school. As well, and this is new, it's a second team of this same partnership group is looking at creating a new science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, you know that to be STEM initiative. Uh, with a project or projects, and th they, that those would be specifically targeted for K-8, so more enrichment around STEM for our, our K-8 students. It's an exciting new initiative, and um, it also involves an exciting new partnership uh, that we are cultivating with the Maine Mathematics and Science Alliance. So there's some really, really good and interesting work going on. Lastly, but certainly very important as well, is the Scarborough Schools Arts Council. The council is broken out into five task teams, all of which are preparing proposals for new or revived projects to promote the arts, or to promote arts education for our students. Proposals are being developed for a program to provide supplemental instrumental instruction to Scarborough Band students, a brand new strings program for, um, for our students, a community-wide arts night showcasing all of the arts and, I, um, and that's sort of a, an abbreviated format for an art show. Um, the re-envisioning of the art show that I heard about uh, that had been lost uh, probably what, upwards of seven y years or so ago due to budget cuts. Mm -hmm. No, they've been gone for five years because I've been here for five and they were... Yeah, that's what I'm saying, five years. Five years, yeah. okay. So, so five, five years um, and re-envisioning what that former Scarborough art, art show might look like. Um, and also uh, looking at a proposal for some kind of scaled down art show in collaboration with Piper Shores. So there's a lot of exciting things. We'll see what happens there. Not all of those programs, of course, will be launched. Um, the generous donation of Louis and Tina Feinberg and the trust that's been established in their name will fund some of those new initiatives. But we're looking to have these initiatives be 
um, hopefully self-sustaining at some point so that we're not draining that, that trust. Any questions about that? I have, yes, Jody? Are those initiatives that are looking to, I know not all of them will be implemented, but is the thought process this year? Uh, I think that it would be next year. I think it would be next year. There may be things, for example, one of the things that we're interested in, and I just had a great conversation with John Elliott, who's the Director of Education and Community Outreach for Portland Symphony, and he runs the or organizes and schedules the kinder concerts. Mm -hmm. And one of the ideas uh, that John had, um, and I think is a, a great idea and a potential catalyst for thinking about a strings program, is to do a strings kinder con concert in the spring, invite parents and students, particularly if they are ready to roll out a proposal for getting something started for next year. That's a perfect way to, to bring people in, get them engaged, and, um, and get them excited about what might be happening next year. So. Okay. Um, I'm really excited to hear about the art things, especially the strings. We have so many talented young string players in mm -hmm. Scarborough, and so it's really exciting to hear that they could do that. But the question that I have is about the emergency. Um, you mentioned the trainings and simulations. Mm -hmm. What types of simulations are included under that? And are these for students or for faculty and staff? Well, Joanne is really the expert on that team, so I'll, I'll let her answer that. Um, the ton of trainings would be like a lockdown, school lockdowns. Um, for all grades? For all grades, and they have, um, I know one school has practiced them now. Um, we have a meeting coming up with public safety in where um, they received a grant and are going to be working with the high school in looking at tabletop exercises that they do. What happens if we had, um, you know, uh, an active shooter situation? What are all the things that need to be part of that and planning and discussing that? We, um, part of the work that we did is that we implemented a um, uniform um, language, common language that is used in all of our schools when it's an evacuation, where it's a lock in place, hold in place, or a lockdown, so that no matter what school you're in, the same language is being used if the one of those drills or a situation happens. I've just read so much, um, both anecdotal and from experts in the field, about the potential emotional effects of these trainings on mm -hmm. kids, and I just want to, I'm can you reassure me that we're taking into account the, the, the trauma that a lockdown simulation can cause in a young Absolutely. kid? Absolutely. That is a really big part of our discussions is what happens because these are kids that we're dealing with. And also sometimes even with the adults, they you know, have um, different feelings about it. Um, one of the other pieces that's being implemented right now is a, is a program called Shared 911 where it's an internal 911 system with the schools and, and we're just starting that um, practicing, but we definitely take in consideration um, the kids and how we tell them, you know, there's certain grades, we, we tell them this is a, a practice, this is not real, you know, and they do a lot of work with the support staff that are there for um, in student advocacy with kids to let them know that don't worry, this is just a practice, you know, um, so yes, Kate, we are really and some of the more involved and complicated scenarios are really done as tabletop exercise for the for the adults. It's really it's really the training and and uh, the thinking through of certain scenarios for the adults in the building. But uh, this is you know this is uh, not something that I get to update you on on a regular basis. There is um, tremendous and and really positive work that's happening. And um, and as these as the Health Safety Security and Wellness Advisory Board, as the uh, Emergency Preparedness and Training Team, and the Scarborough Schools um, Business and edu uh, Education and Business Partners, along with the Arts Council, as they have as they have evolved. Um, we have also increased significantly the involvement and engagement of, of community members in, in these uh, different um, uh, different efforts that we have ongoing. So okay. I just think it's important. I just want to highlight a success story of the community being engaged. Um, it was an Education Foundation grant for a ukulele club at Wentworth for fourth graders. And it's been hugely successful. Our Murphy Family Ukulele, our personal own, will arrive tomorrow. Um, it's Exciting. Yeah, so we'll have a great weekend, I'm sure, living it up with our ukulele. But um, so that's run by um, Barbara Merritt, the librarian at Wentworth, and Duncan Perry, who is just 
a you know, lovely community member, and he is now volunteering his time to come in additionally on Friday mornings at 8. So the ukulele players can come and practice an extra session once a week. Right now they meet, they have a floating extra um, allied arts class, and that's when they typically go. But now they're going to be able to go every Friday, and it's really taken off, and I think all the kids are begging for ukuleles to practice at home because they stay in the learning commons, and when it's their turn for learning commons during the week, they can also, if they have a few minutes at the end, they can also practice. So then all the kids are looking at them. I think it's just been a fantastic success story of what happens when the community members are invited and welcomed into the school mm -hmm. to share their talents with the kids, and it's really it's really been great. Mm -hmm. So go team on that one. I'm that great. really excited to hear that there's a possibility that the art show is coming back. Cause when we lost that, everyone was really upset. <laughs> I like still talk to my friends about, like, we remember the art show as being the best day when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Like, we got to go up to the high school and walk around and see all the art. Oh, my God. It was the best day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, re I'm really glad that we possibly could see that again. Anyone else? Good. Um, I've asked Kate to just give you a quick um, financial update, um, a little bit of an update in terms of the budget calendar. It's actually still a draft. It's being considered um, and will be finalized next week at the Joint Finance Committee meeting. Um, the status of uh, the budget development that we've been doing or that she's been doing primarily uh, to date and uh, just also an audit status. All of those things are going to happen fairly quickly. Thank you, George. I think the operative word tonight should be brief because uh, you folks have a, absorbed an awful lot of information already this evening. I'm pretty excited about the superintendent search. I'm sorry we have to have a superintendent search, and I am regularly shouting at George about it, but um, I think that the NASDAQ proposal just sounds really spot on and, and very, um, very professional. And I have high hopes for that. So the reason I'm here with you tonight is that it, it's the end of the second quarter of the fiscal year. And there's a few things that have happened um, recently that we need to just sort of check in on, um, on the financial front. Uh, first thing I'll talk about, not necessarily in the order that George presented, is very quickly we have completed the school department's portion of the audit. The audit is done by an outside firm called Mac Page. Um, there are current auditors and it's an independent audit firm. They come in and they audit the books of the town and the school department as a department of the town. Um, they're nice enough to provide us with a little separate book because there are some reporting requirements that the school has to other stakeholders like the Department of Education at the state and federal level. Um, and of course we have our own governing board. So they create a, a budget book, uh, excuse me, an audit book for us, and then we are also part of the town's audit because we belong to the town's fiscal, um, fiscal picture. So the good news is that the audit for the school department is finished. Um, it was very clean. There wasn't anything scary in there, and uh, they gave us good marks, as I'm happy to say they usually do. Um, a few recommendations, um, which we'll hear about. Uh, the town's audit is not yet done, so we're expecting that to be finished at the end of this month. And once everything is wrapped up, Mac Page will come in, and it's generally their um, lead auditor, Christian Smith, who is a parent in Scarborough and a very nice guy. He'll come in and give us a report. We'll do, he'll do a little uh, workshop with the council and the board um, to explain how the audit went, what was in it, what they found, and you know how things are going, and, and how to read the reports on a, on a high level. I do have copies, as I just waved at you, of the uh, school department's portion of the audit. I shared them with the finance committee a little earlier this evening, and um, I'm expecting them to read them cover to cover um, because they're the finance committee. Uh, if anyone else would like a copy of it, please just let me know. I've got them right here, a few tonight. I have them in my office as well. But we will get the full book, and we will also get a date for that report out, which I'll share with you, because I, I think it's, it's quite interesting to hear them. Um, well, I would think that, wouldn't I? 
<laughs> so then the, the next thing, and, and Emma was nice enough to hand down a pile of paper for me. The next thing is to talk about budget. Um, we have the budget calendar. Uh, this year we've put together a one-page sort of Easter colored calendar that you're looking at right now. Um, the Finance Committee looked at this uh, not too long ago this evening and we discovered that there were a couple of dates that could be tweaked. So I've actually gone up and, and changed that while you folks were in executive session. And so what you're looking at now, Finance Committee, is a newer version of, of what we looked at earlier tonight, um, just to confuse things. Um, I emailed it to uh, the Town Council Finance Committee as well. So uh, good things to know about the budget process right now. The um, Town Council Finance Committee and the School Board Finance Committee are committed to working together on the budget process as we did successfully last year um, with an even deeper commitment this year to an earlier approach, um, making sure that we're collaborating at the highest level on goals and um, you know, vision and definition of terms and um, trying to make sure that we're all on the same page when, we, when it comes to discussing what does the municipal budget mean as a whole and where does the school budget fit into that. Um, so the calendar that you're looking at right now contains a lot of those joint meeting dates um, starting next week. Uh, I think Jody might mention this in her committee report that uh, the two finance committees will be getting together next Thursday. It's Thursday, right? The 14th? Thursday. Um, and uh, that'll be their kickoff meeting as a joint group. And um, we're working on some interesting ideas for metrics and you know, how are we going to be able to measure successes in the way that we spend our funds in this town and, and in the investments that we're making in our community. Um, so that's on the calendar that you have before you, and, and this is a draft. It will be presumably adopted by that uh, joint group next week, but I wanted to get it out to you because there are going to be some sort of save the date things that we'll want to make sure uh, people have on their calendars, and it, it's not likely to change significantly. We've already had a, a few conversations about the dates. So um, I think You'll hear a lot about how we've been doing with our colleagues on the town side and, and what kinds of things we're coming up with as we go along. In the meantime, we've got uh, budget development happening with the Leadership Council. Um, we are in the process right now of building what we've been calling the Level Services Budget. And a lot of that work devolves to me, hooray because I have the data to do it. Um, so I wanted to spend maybe two minutes telling you what that process looks like because that's the stuff that's going on behind the scenes right now before we even get to the point where we can present a budget to uh, the school board and to the public. So right now we're looking at the building blocks of that level services budget. Um, and as you have heard us say a million times, Salaries and benefits make up about 75% of our expenses. So we start with those. We start with people. Um, through the payroll system that we have, um, I can do some very handy data dumps so that I know for every person who works in our district right now, I know what cost center they belong to. I know what bargaining unit they belong to. I know where they are on a salary table. And I can advance them into next year in most cases and know pretty much exactly where they belong and how much they will cost. So I, I have this vision of myself going around putting price tags on everybody, like the, what is it, the progressive uh, insurance company, that advertisement. Mm -hmm. So um, right now I'm building a, a giant spreadsheet of, of personnel costs, salaries and benefits. Um, I'm also using some guesswork on the benefit side. Um, we usually have to estimate where we're going to be with Anthem. You hear me talk about that as well. Uh, we don't get our Anthem rates until um, usually April. Um, and that's a huge cost for us. You know, that's, that's millions of dollars. So we have to figure out where everybody is today, what it's costing us today for those people. We make the guess that they're probably going to have that same coverage next year, and then we apply an increase based on what Anthem's rates have increased by in the past. And right now we're looking at somewhere between 5 and 
um, as an average of the increases we've had over the past few years. So that goes into the spreadsheet. Um, I build a list for all of the school leaders um, as a check-in and say, hey guys, will you take a look at the list? Um, Barb, will you look at the middle school list and tell me, first of all, do all these people really work in your building? <laughs> do you know what they're doing? Are they in the right cost center? Do I have them divvied out right? Um, it gives us a check-in. It makes sure we know what we're doing in payroll. We've got it right. Um, but it also gives the school leaders an opportunity to see what resources they have and to begin thinking of those folks in terms of budget conversations. Um, when we then go back to the Leadership Council to talk about staffing deficits, which we talked about a little bit earlier, they know where the gaps are. They can see what it would look like to fit the pieces of the puzzle together to achieve their goals. When we estimate for a new position, which will come along a little bit later in my conversations with the leaders, we generally put a price tag on that as well. We take a professional person and we say, I'm going to say this year that a professional a teacher or um, you know, that would be a social worker, or guidance counselor, the, the folks that are in the, in the teachers and professionals bargaining unit is going to cost somewhere in the range of $68,000 and a support staff person is going to cost somewhere in the range of thirty-nine dollars to $40,000, the salary and benefits. So when we say we need that new foreign language teacher at the middle school, we're going to slap a price tag on that as well and put that into our proposal. Um, then you've got the non-personnel accounts, so talking about school-based items like instructional supplies, books, professional development. Um, these are accounts that are essentially managed by the department head or the school leader. And so I sit with those folks and I'll spend a couple of weeks at the end of this month sitting down one-on-one -on -one and finding out what are your changes, what's going on, are you doing okay with, your, with the lines that you have this year. We delve into the accounts that they're working with this year, with the budget amounts they have, with their current expenditures, talk about what might be on the horizon, what might be changing. And so we arrive at a pretty good guess as to what next year will cost. And again, we're still talking about level services. This is like doing today what we, doing tomorrow what we're, what we're doing today. There's another set of accounts that are things like contracted services, property insurance, um, premiums, energy costs, um, a lot of the facilities related uh, costs. Todd, of course, is a huge resource to me on that. He's very knowledgeable. Um, but again, we have a lot of data to work with. So I can go into our financial system and I can find out exactly what we've been spending, what we spent last year, what we're likely to spend this year. Um, we have some information from vendors that's ongoing, communication. And so in, in the end, we're able to come up with a pretty good guess as to where we're going to be on expenditures for that level services budget. And that provides the basis for any discussion of new investment. Um, so the end result of all this work is something that we can roll out as the Leadership Council's budget. Um, there are a couple of pieces that we rely on the town for. Um, the IT shared services piece, debt services, another one where we, because our debt comes from the town, it's the bonds are, are issued by the town, we ask them for those numbers. But we put all the pieces together we build the level services budget, and then we ask the Leadership Council to come to us with their request for anything that might, might be new. So that's kind of where we are today in the budget development process. You've got these two tracks going on right now. You've got Leadership Council and my folks crunching numbers like crazy trying to build that foundation, and then you've got the uh, Town Council and the, the School Board Finance Committee is talking about the big picture and what is it going to look like for the community as a whole and, and what goals do we have and, and where are we going with all this. So that's my budget update. And I'm so not brief, am I? Oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> I was born this way. I'm really sorry. Uh, the, the last thing that you have before you is the quarter two financials. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. There's, there's a financial report. It's five pages. Two of them are story because that's who I am. I have two pages of number, three pages of numbers and two pages of narrative. 
which is about the ratio that, that I live with. Uh, and I have gone through this with the Finance Committee this evening. I think we got through just about everything we wanted to before we had to wrap up for lack of time. Essentially, we're at the end of the second quarter. We're on target as far as spending is concerned. We're, we're taking a look at where we are in comparison with prior years. Um, and you know, the, the percentage of our budget that's currently been expended is appropriate for the time of the year that we're in. We don't see any huge red flags on any of the categories, really. You know, there's some fluctuations here and there, um, some delays in revenue, some changes in spending patterns. But on the whole, we're in very good shape. So I, I think I, what I'll do is leave you with the written report, and I'll uh, email that out as well and post it so that people can take a look at it. Um, if there were any questions, I wonder if, if maybe um, the finance folks had anything that they had thought of in the meantime that they wanted me to answer here. Um, but apart from that, I think I'll just sort of let you have that for bedtime reading. Because <laughs> everybody's getting very sleepy. That's good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Kate. Good job. Thanks. That's it. Thank you. Um, so 8.0, the Chair's report. I'll be really brief on this. Um, so if you haven't caught it in the news, basically what has happened now is that uh, we are we will be saying goodbye to No Child Left Behind and hello to ESSA, which is Every Student Succeeds Act. And so uh, some of the work that the states have been doing um, is now about to change in terms of what they tell uh, the school systems to do. And uh, it, the information I've received it is that it's going to look distinctly different in terms of the direction rather than NCLB which had been setting goals for all schools and then labeling them as failing when the goals weren't met. So the new ESSA limits the federal government's role and pushes the decision making around accountability to the states and the individual school districts. Uh, standardized tests will still be taken and be part of the picture. I believe the state of Maine has uh, decided that they would go with um, an organization that they have used in the past, which is out of New Hampshire. MEA. M the MEA, Maine Education Association. No, yes. that's the that's association. Right. Maine Education Foundation, isn't it down there in New Hampshire? Measured well, progress. whatever. So it's measured progress is what it is, so that's what tests will be given to our students. Um, other factors, however, will be considered like school climate and teacher engagement and access to and success in advanced coursework. So it's going to be a little different. It goes into effect uh, 2017 to 18. And there we go with a whole new direction. So I just want to keep you up to date on that new, I, new piece of information. All right, 10.8. Uh, 9.0 committee report. Anyone where we want to start? Jody? I'll start. Um, finance? Sure, Finance Committee. Kate stole most of my thunder, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, there's a joint meeting with the Finance Committees of the Town Council and the School Board next Thursday, the 14th at 2 p.m. in Chambers. We've said it about 20 times, I think, today, so it should be well received. We finalized in our um, Finance Committee meeting. Right before this meeting, we finalized our goals for the year, and those will be posted onto our website. We discussed metrics, as Kate had mentioned. We're going to start that, that process and that discussion with the Town Council Finance Committee as well. And she gave us a second quarter update, which will also be posted on the website, correct? Very good, thank you. Kelly? Um, I just want to correct something I said before. I was really proud of myself for thinking far in advance and I put all these budget dates on my calendar. It was listed as April 13th originally, right, as the budget workshop, and this calendar's changed. 
And my calendar auto-corrected to Badger Workshop, but I'm fairly certain that that is supposed to be a budget workshop on the 13th. So, so now it's on the 8th. I just want people to know in case they have also been very advanced with their calendars. So, <laughs> so as far as the policy committee goes, it sounds like, um, based on developments here tonight, that we might not be able to meet on the 21st as we are scheduled to. Um, in our regularly standing pre-workshop meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully we can come together and find another date. I'm thinking the, 20, um, the 14th at 6 o'clock, but we'll have to discuss and see what works. But uh, we have only been able to meet very briefly um, since our last meeting because we were also preempted <laughs> by superintendent search stuff. So hopefully we can get a real meeting in on the 14th or some day around there. Great. Okay, Jackie? Yeah. I have to ask jo Joanne a question before I make my statement. Uh, I thought we were having training on the 21st. We are. We are. We are. That's what I thought. 21st is going to be very busy. Yeah. On the 21st, uh, the Scarborough Education Association and the Scarborough Board of Education's negotiations teams are going to enter into a training on, uh, I wrote it down, interest-based bargaining. Interest -based bargaining, which is a new term for win-win bargaining, but uh, if, it, if we are successful, and I have every hope that we will be successful. First of all, it should shorten the amount of time it takes to settle a contract. And secondly, uh, everything will be on the table from both sides from the very beginning. So that should again shorten up the length of time that uh, we should be in negotiations. I'm very hopeful that this will transpire, it, it will be helpful for all of us. With regards to what Donna just said about uh, changing the way that we do business educationally, there's an emergency bill that's going into the legislature that is going to ask that we not be required to do the testing this year, that schools may do so if they wish, but it will not be part of a state mandate. That the reason I know about this is I'm on the legislative committee, and it's going to be discussed tomorrow at our legislative committee meeting. So another maybe or maybe not as far as the testing is concerned. I will let you know because I. I don't remember the date of the hearing, but we'll be we'll be talking more about that. The Maine Education Association had it posted on um, their website as well. I get that because I'm a retired teacher, mm -hmm. and they're uh, going to be testifying on that that behalf as well. So there are several emergency bills coming down the pike that we will be most interested in. Okay, Carrie. The Communications Committee met on Monday. Uh, we discussed continuing to grow our Facebook page through a few different strategies. Um, also decided to move ahead with a newsletter using Constant Contact. Uh, we're aiming for the newsletter to come out maybe four times a year, at least for this first year. Um, also discussed uh, getting in touch with the library and maybe finding uh, different venues for um, using their resources and maybe bringing in some speakers, um, just more ways of reaching out to the community. Okay, thank you. Christine, what's your name? Long range planning will be meeting January 20th for the results of our uh, demographics. demographics study that's been going on over the past number of months. So we're, okay. I'm looking forward. I'm mm -hmm. sure everybody else is as well. With bated breath, we're waiting to oh, hear what has been yeah, found out sure. in conjunction. Um, there was work that went on with uh, Dan Bacon down in the planning department, so it wasn't just oh. us getting demographics from 
you know, a company. So we, we actually were working with the town to try to figure out what neighborhoods are growing, what are coming in, mm -hmm. what's going on. So um, we'll have a hopefully larger update after the January 20th yes. meeting. 20th, what time on, is that on? Um, hold on. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, that looks like 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Well, okay. 1 o'clock is what I have, so, but I've left a larger block it's than 1 o'clock. So. 1 to 2.30. Okay. I left a lot more time than that. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's see. I don't know how I'm going to get my nap in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we all set? Kate, you don't have anything to report right now on? <laughs> okay. I didn't want to leave you out if you had something happening. 10.0 student representatives reports. Yep. So, um, all the students are coming back from vacation and at the high school at least we're getting ready for midterm exams and those start January 19th, so the Tuesday after Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, Scarborough, Athletic, uh, Scarborough High School Athletics would like to congratulate and thank the 2015-2016 Scarborough Dribblets for their hard work for performing at halftime of the varsity boys basketball game on December 15th and they also have more performances coming up at other games. Um, I always enjoy seeing them because I love going to the basketball games and when I see the Wentworth aged and the little dribblets that they're doing their cool tricks, it's always fun. <laughs> um, anyway, so Friday, April 8th, 2016, so the Scarborough Athletic Council is presenting the comedy Auto Body at Scarborough High School. Uh, tickets are $10 per person and all the proceeds are going to benefit the Scarborough Athletic Council High School Scholarship Fund. Um, and now onto the middle school. All the eighth grade students are going to be taking the cognitive abilities test as a part of the local assessment system. And a practice test will be administered to all the eighth graders on Wednesday, January 13th, but the actual test will be given on Thursday, January 14th from 7.50 to 10.50. This year, the winter sixth grade band and middle school chorus concert will be held on January 11th in the Winslow Homer Auditorium at Scarborough High School, and the seventh and eighth grade winter band concert will be held on January 12th at the auditorium. On January 15th will be the B-Day at the middle school. Uh, students will have the opportunity to cheer on their peers during the school day at the Spelling Bee, Vocab Bee, Geo Bee, and Trivia Bee. <laughs> um, eighth graders will be attending Junior Achievement Job Shadow Day, uh, field trips later in January. Also in January, sixth graders are attending field trips to the Boston Museum of Science. Very good. Thank you. 11.0, new business, 11.1. Do I have a motion regarding the meeting minutes of December 15th? Move approval is printed. Second. Any discussion, corrections, uh, Emma? Oh, it's absent, so I won't be voting. Okay. Anyone else? Anything? All right. Very good. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. 11.2, Bob's discount furniture donations. Uh-huh. Nice. Always, always very nice. Um, Bob's has made the generous donation of $2,500 uh, to the middle school, and um, the funds will be used to purchase a flat screen TV and the te technology required to post news and important information for students to read during lunches. Um, and also to um, Blue Point um, and as a part of the Random Acts of Kindness program. Um, and basically, and Cass is saying it can be used in whatever way they want over there at, at Blue Point. And I guess that there's um, probably plenty of things uh, that would be worthy of uh, that 2,500. But we <coughs> would recommend that the board accept these graciously because it's a nice, um, it's a nice uh, little donation from Bob's. And for the record, Blue Point will share. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, well that is, that's even nice. <laughs> I was just, I was just reading what I had here. Yeah. What did you, 
So was the 2,500 total? Or no. 2,500 um, for the middle school, 2,500 K2. Oh, wow. Chris, okay. Chris walked into the office, told the prize, Wow. Well, Bob's uh, Bob's discount did just open their furniture store in Scarborough, so I have heard that that's a part of their, um, you know, their welcome to us. I guess their their interest in having business in our community, yeah. and um, so th this was just a really lovely way for them to um, show that they are a part of our mm -hmm. our town now and. Gee, we don't have that happen a whole lot. You have to watch the ads. You should make a requirement. I'll <laughs> <laughs> to do that. In a new area that <laughs> called the yeah. exceptional. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes. The, um, that is April 8th. The woman who came is yeah. short and long woman who's on the ad. Oh, yeah. And she oh. said that she was teaching a bunch of years ago to create this random act of kind of program. Oh. She gets all around the country. It isn't just New England, but she gets to all over the country and hands people checks, and it's just a random pick. It's a random pick, so we just got lucky. We yeah. got lucky. Awesome. Well, That's I great. That. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky. So we'll have a letter going out to Bob's discount, will we? Thanking them. I think we need a movement, correct? Like, I move that we accept the kind donation from Bob's discount furniture in the total amount of $5,000. Second. Second. Very good. All in favor? Seven plus one. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. And 12.0. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Seven plus one. Thank you. We are adjourned. Hey, can, we, can we petition oh, yeah. to have it a little um, warmer at the next meeting? Yeah. Is it cold? I am.